There are some tricks to changing an Aqualisa shower cartridge because it's not straightforward. Not as straightforward as they would have you believe in the manufacturer's video, which is done on a brand new piece of kit in a very uh, easy surround. This is 38 years old, so taking it out and putting the new one in is not that straightforward. This is an old Aqualisa shower. It's about circa 1986. And although it's old, that makes it 38 years old, maybe 39, uh, the, sh the shower is still fantastic. I mean, tiled okay. And what I was dreading was having to replace the whole thing until I discovered Aqualisa have not changed anything in over 40 years, which means the cartridge just pops out and pops in. But it doesn't. There are a couple of tricks and some things you need to take care of. But this cartridge is easily available. You can pick it up from Screwfix, The Shower Doctor, or anywhere. Have a look for it online. You'll find it. Uh, some places are 20, 30 pounds cheaper than others. It's unlikely this will just pull off. So you'll need a screwdriver each side just under it to wedge it forwards and flip it off. Underneath the temperature lever has four screws in take them off but do keep the screws keep all of the screws because the screws that come with it may not be the right ones for you they've changed the screws if you have the older type screw you will need to keep the ones you're taking out gently release the old one by undoing a bit of each of the four screws of the cartridge bit by bit and then release it now you'll find it's very hard to pull this out i did it with a pair of uh, grip clamps on the front knob and pulling it until it did release itself. Once you pop it out, you're left with this hole, this sleeve. Do not damage it. It's, it's fantastic because all you've got to do is put the new cartridge in, but it's not that easy. Because with these uh, little brass screw housings, they can drift forward. And if you don't get them set back, in other words, check they're set back, they will actually cause the washer to sit forwards and you'll have a leak. Now, if the screws you took out have this sort of beveled, narrower end, use these screws when you put the new one in. Do not use the screws that come with it. You must use these older screws. Now, here's the snag. It's this washer at the back in the circle at the back. That's the hot water feed. And this washer, they say, pull it out with a crochet hook. Well, good luck with that one. It's actually set in the groove. And if yours is old, it will have worn down and gone flat. It's the thing that will take you the longest. And I used a pointed, bent, sort of braille type screwdriver to dig mine out. And in fact, I had to break the washer to get it out. It took ages. So I bent this sharp tool into a right angle so I could dig it into the washer and lever it out. Do not damage the seating. Ignoring the damage I've done to the washer to get it out, you can see it's flat, squashed and misshaped. You should definitely change this. You only get one with the new kit. There are some other washers you may not need, but you do need this. And before you jump in with this new one, you will need to clean the housing. We live in a hard water area, which meant there were there's lots of residue that I had to clean out. Uh, but, you know, it's 38 years old. The residue around the back here was stuck on. I cleaned all of that off as I could without damaging the housing and got that um, as flat as it could for the, the new unit to sit into. I then cleaned out the inside with a toothbrush so that that became nice and clean and then flushed the whole thing. Pieces of black rubber just kept coming out. But eventually when it was clean, I put the new washer in. The new washer seemed to be rather larger than the hole, but with a lot of effort, I managed to get it in and then flattened it into the groove using the round neck of a very small screwdriver. Now, there are two other problems because the front knob and the heat lever have technically been discontinued and people are taking such advantage by selling these at astronomical prices. I've seen the heat lever for £70. Ridiculous. So before we get into that and showing you the trick of putting in the new valve, let me just say this is normally a cruise channel. Welcome to the Queen Mary 2. 
I'm back on the Aurora. Virgin ships are for adults only. If Helen did exist, she would have existed within these walls. We go cruising and we film the cruise ports and the cruise ships. There's two ships in split today, the MSC Symphonia and the PNO Azura. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Guess where we are? We're in Split. And if you want to pick up the free walking tour... So if you're thinking of cruising or never cruised before, then let us show you the ships because you must choose the right ship, the ship that suits you. And the ports, well, you can then, looking at the port, decide whether you need an excursion, get around by public bus, or literally walk around the town. So hopefully we'll save you some money there. We're going to save you some money now. Oh, and please read my book, Cruise Ship Heist, and then please, please, please review it. Okay, this heat lever. So £70, I was not going to pay that for a heat lever. We put it in the dishwasher, and then I screwed a nut from the interior into a knob. And then I put a little piece of hosing or tube around it and filled it with glue to make it absolutely solid and strong. The on-off knob, uh, we put in the dishwasher and got it as clean as we could. And then that was ready for refitting. Now here's the trick with the actual cassette. You've got to get this washer in placed correctly. And the way to do it is to hold it in place with one or two of the screws and then line the whole cartridge up with the screw holes in the housing. And then using a small screwdriver, make sure that hole is lined up. So these are our screws with the little beveled end and they're going into the brass fitting in the sleeve which we checked was in and flat. And I'm just tapping this back evenly and then doing it up a bit by bit around the four screws so each one is done up evenly and the whole thing sits back nice and squarely against the washer you mustn't over tighten it but if you don't tighten it enough it will leak time to fit my homemade heat lever and the reason i've had to do this knob on the heat lever is that they break the little fan on the end of it which you use to turn backwards and forward as this cartridge gets harder and harder to turn from hot to cold which is a sign it's getting old and furred up and needs changing um, that lever breaks off this lever hopefully won't break for some time but we'll see four screws again uh, this is not quite so important because of using the old beveled end screws because you're using the screws they supply into the cartridge they supply. The screws you must use as old screws with the beveled end are the ones going into your old housing. Okay, that's it, the job is done. Do it up, put the end on, and we're ready to test the shower. And there we are, I can report it's all working and saved hundreds of pounds without the mess of retiling and everything else that would go with it by having to change the shower. I hope these tips helped you. Now, if you wouldn't mind, Cruise Ship Heist is 99p on the Kindle, or it's actually free if you wish to listen to the audiobook here on our YouTube channel. If you do buy it, please review it. That really helps. Thank you.